Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Ash Paulson, and today I'm joined by Tom Arnold to discuss, well, everything Shovel Knight. Uh, basically today, earlier today, there was a Yacht Club Games Presents presentation, which, which was essentially their version of a Nintendo Direct, where they ba uh, announced all tons of new Shovel Knight information, including stuff that we know about, like updates on things we know about, as well as things we had no idea uh, were coming. So, Tom, let's go ahead and start off with the, I would say, the biggest news other than Shovel Knight Dig, which is the fact that Shovel Knight, King of Cards, and Showdown, after more than two years in development, finally have a release date of this December. How you feeling about that? I'm pretty stoked. I mean, Showdown, it seems like a playable game already last year. PAX, so you right. can only imagine how much better it is with one more year of Yacht Club Games working on it. Exactly. Like, uh, we know that I think Showdown began life as, just, you know, specifically a Smash-style multiplayer party game uh, slash fighting game, but then, it, you know, either this was the plan all along or they just didn't want to reveal this until later, but now we know there is a full-fledged single-player mode as well uh, that I guess has some story elements to it, like it might have a light story mode for each character. I'm not completely clear on that, but there is a single-player mode for this game, so... You know, this doesn't have to be something that's passed off as, you know, something you can ignore if you don't have a lot of friends who might be interested in playing Showdown with you. Although, personally, I hope I can get my friends into it because it looks like a blast, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. I guess the only problem is if you can get friends over at your place or bring exactly. your Switch to them. Because it's not online, but uh, I'm fine with that being from the Stone Age. Right, exactly. So, there is no online. I know that'll probably ruffle a few feathers, but... I think it's better that they focused on making the actual game the best it can be uh, than having to worry about online, you know, issues, latency and such. Plus, we already know that, you know, if it was online on Switch, it probably wouldn't be the best experience because Nintendo. So, yeah. you know, maybe they were worried about, you know, obviously Yacht Club Games uh, has kind of positioned both themselves and Shovel Knight as a Nintendo first developer. So perhaps yeah. they didn't want to risk having superior online experiences on non-Nintendo systems. Uh, I'm not saying that's definitely it, but that is, you know, at least my own speculation. But uh, what's really cool about this is that in the new Shovel Knight Showdown trailer they aired during this uh, presentation, it was very Smash style and that there were a lot of quick cuts that, you know, if you're not looking closely, you could miss a few new details they kind of revealed on the sly, uh, other than the official announcement, which was Mona is going to be uh, added to the playable character roster, and I'm super excited about that. I've always loved her character, even more so in uh, Plague of Shadows. What about you? For me, she was a part of my favorite story in the Shovel Knight series of games so far, So, and definitely one of my favorite characters. Great to see her in there. Fun fact I heard during the q and A is that they didn't animate or draw in her whole robe, because that was just too hard in pixels. <laughs> it's actually like a, a shorter robe. Uh -huh. And it looks like neat things. Uh, they listed, for instance, how she throws the potions from that minigame, but right. if you're not careful, guys can bounce those potions right back at you and have them explode in your face. Right, which is really cool. Like It, it does seem as though every character is going to play at least somewhat differently, and, and I do love that it's, it's Smash style again in, in the sense that the controls for each character don't change. Like, you, you know, yeah. the, the, there are no command inputs things like that. Basically, the controls for one character are the controls for every character. It's just a matter of knowing what they can do. And I much prefer that style uh, to traditional command inputs, only because I can't remember them all, uh, other than yeah. like, you know, some Street Fighter characters. I just can't remember all that stuff. So, um, yeah, no, I think that's super cool. And so some of the stuff that you may have missed if you weren't really analyzing the trailer, uh, like we did, is that um, there are actually Smash-style character unlocks where it basically says, you know, Tinker Knight has been unlocked. So it looks like you might start with a small roster and then, you know, gradually build that roster up to its maximum size by unlocking, I don't know about if it's every character, but it seems like you at least unlock the vast majority of the bosses. So I thought that was cool. Um, I caught that there were, you can play, one of the stages we haven't seen yet is the campfire, kind of like interstitial. Between stages in the regular game, uh, there's like a campfire that Shovel Knight camps out at, and this is a stage now in Showdown, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was hilarious uh, in the Q&A how Sean Velasco was saying, like, this was our uh, initial dream idea of what the campfire scene would play out as. <laughs> Just I, the I four love guys. That. That's so, I actually hadn't heard that, so that's great. Uh, I do love that. And uh, then... One, I, I think they at least revealed on the sly one new character in Mr. Hat, because you can see him both in a match and you can see his character art 
that presumably would go on the character select screen. So, Mr. Hat seems to be playable. Uh, I did notice that in the single player footage, Phantom Striker appeared as a as an enemy that you encounter. So that suggests to me that he may be playable as well. What do you think? I'm guessing it's likely for that guy. I mean, we got Mr. Hat in there, probably Phantom Striker as well. Right, and then if you you know you can also take that to its natural conclusion and probably guess that both the Boz and Ray's I think Ray's Seatlin I can't remember his last name Ray's the uh, the kid warrior with the boomerang type weapon. Uh, he, I, I'm guessing all four of those Kickstarter design characters will be playable. That's going to be quite a roster for this, what is really like a, a free update <laughs> to it's, people who... It's all free! It's cre- Yeah, I mean, if, if you back this game from the beginning, that's what's so cool about Yacht Club, is they really have followed through on every stretch goal they promised. And, it's, and they've also followed through on making it free for everybody who has supported the game from the beginning, which... I'm so glad that they found ways to monetize this series because, yeah. you know, they were offering so much for free, and they still are. So I'm very glad that they have uh, found ways to monetize it for people who have not been in since the beginning. I guess that's the early investor bonus, but to keep working on it for five years, you really got to think they're going to be relieved once it's done, yet at the same time, I wonder what that will be like for them if they're kind of lost or just going to take a break after this. Right, exactly. I mean, well, as we know, it seems like they're still hard at work going forward with uh, Shovel Knight Dig, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, I know something you noticed, Tom, was that there are there seem to be stage hazards, which I already knew from, I think we both already knew from playing previous demos, but there are some new stage hazards that are particularly cool, like the Travel King. Seems like he might do some sort of splashing in the background and cause like a, an earthquake. I'm not quite sure, but it, it, he's either a really cool background element or an actual hazard, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he actually has a new dance for this game. Right. <laughs> exactly. That that alone would be worth the price of admission for me, even though it's free for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, even if I have to pay for Showdown, a new Tropical King dance would, would be it for me. Um, and then I guess the a couple of things I noticed that are really interesting is that Shovel Knight actually has his fish head alt. Uh, one of his alts is Shovel Knight without his helmet and the inexplicable uh, presence of a fish underneath, which has begged the question ever since the original game, has Shovel Knight been a fish? You know, a, an anthropomorphic fish all this time covered in, in armor. What do you think? <laughs> I, that, that would be quite the reveal. That'd be like... It's so good. <laughs> Like Master Chief, <laughs> right? Master being Chief a being, bear. yeah, being a, a, some know. animal all along. I, I, that's exactly the kind of yacht club games humor I like because, you know, in, in the original game, uh, it's in one of the towns where you know, Shovel Knight. There will be a character named or that looks like Shovel Knight just walking by, uh, that was like an NPC you can interact with, but he just has a fish head. There's no explanation. There's no context. It's just there for you to draw your own conclusions about, which I think is great. Uh, and then finally, it looks as though the horse NPC might be playable. Did you catch that? I didn't actually see that one. But okay, I don't sure. know. It, it, I don't. It, he may be a, like a summonable assist trophy type character, so he may not actually be playable. But I did notice the horse NPC merchant guy in a couple of the battles. So I won't say he's definitely playable, but there is some sort of element that makes him appear in battles. So you know, let's get all the all the weird animal NPCs in there because I just loved how weird they all were. What I did notice, uh, though, later is that while they do have stage hazards, it also looks like they have bosses in the story mode. Like the right. uh, Mirror of Fate looked like a boss with its own meter on screen. So that'll be a pretty uh, packed story mode to have things like that, to have like the Giga Bowser type equivalents in there. Right. Uh, we, also, we also saw the Enchantress as a boss, I believe, which of course is not surprising. And I think they've yeah. already said she might be playable. I think that's already been confirmed. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it does seem like there's going to be a lot of content here, and it looks as though every character has a unique quote for, like, a unique post-match win quote for every other character. So it'll be really interesting to see certain interactions, like, you know, Shovel Knight and Shield Knight, or Mona and Plague Knight. Like, what would Mona say to Plague Knight when she beats him? You know, it's going to be, I think for Shovel Knight, like, really hardcore fans, there's going to be a lot of really cool content to really enjoy in Showdown. It's going to be quite the Game Explained video to record. <laughs> yes, yes it will. Um, but switching gears to Shovel Knight King of Cards for a bit, we did get to see the final trailer before release this December, and it showed a few things that we have not seen from our playable demos in the past. Uh, for example, there seemed to be uh, there's like a burrowing move that King Knight can do, where he actually burrows through the ground 
into another screen. Did you see that? I didn't remember that one as much. I remember the, the bubble one standing out in particular. For the bubble uh, one? Which one is that? I believe King Knight actually show ends up in a bubble. I forget if it was a oh, okay. enemy attacking him, but okay. I actually, I'll admit I watched this trailer the least out of all of them. Though. Sure, sure. Well, it could be because we've known it's been coming for so long. Yeah. Um, but it is finally complete. Development's complete on it. Um, I think they're just doing some polish work now. They said they're uh, they're kind of polishing up some of the alternate language options. But that content-wise, it's complete. Um, something else I noticed is that there seems to be multiple world maps. At least at least more than one, maybe two. But uh, there's one part of the trailer that that shifts between what I imagine is the regular world map and then some sort of alternate location. So maybe we're looking at a longer game with King of Cards than we got in the previous Shovel Knight editions? Uh, they confirmed it. They confirmed this is the biggest adventure yet. Oh, did they? Okay, I, yeah. I missed that. So that's good to know that they've confirmed that. And then, of course, they, they spent a little time showing off Joustus, which is the card game, uh, like the mini game they've kind of woven throughout King of Cards. And uh, they did say in, in the following Q&A that it was obviously inspired by Final Fantasy VIII's Triple Triad, which I think is pretty, pretty obvious anyway without them having to say it. But... Yeah. I gotta say, I'm still not feeling Joustus. That may be because I'm not into card games in general, but I played it in, in an earlier demo. I didn't really enjoy it there, and I'm not really seeing anything here that is changing my mind. But what about you? It might just not be for us. Yeah. Uh, I'm having flashbacks of playing the Exa series where I had to learn Mahjong in oh. Japanese because I'm too dumb to look it up online <laughs> and uh -huh. to get past, get further in the story. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I don't have the best impression of card games. I'm sure Yacht Club, though, will make it entertaining in some way and wouldn't have had it in there otherwise. Like, they probably added exactly. it in there as a challenge to themselves. Yeah, and th there will probably be some, you know, some feats or achievements related to it that, uh, you know, I, I imagine that they're not going to force you to get really good at Joustus just to beat the main the main campaign, just because, yeah. you know, I think they probably are going in knowing that this won't be for everybody. Um, yeah. But it'll be it'll be interesting to see what role it plays in the game itself. Uh, but I just have to say, I, I am so excited about King of Cards. I'm so glad it's finally coming out. And I can see why it took two years to complete. You know, I, I think you and I both felt at previous demos, like at PAX and such, that it felt a little uncharacteristically rough around the edges for Yacht Club. So maybe yeah. they, they noticed that and kind of just realized it needed more time in the oven. In fact, I think I spoke to Sean Velasco uh, one one year at PAX, and he was he said to me, you know, we're not really happy with how it's being received, and we're kind of noticing that there are some things we want to tweak, uh, tweak and tighten up. So I think that's what they've been doing, and so far it shows. Yeah, one thing to consider is uh, King Knight, like what's his moveset based on? Mm -hmm. uh, considering Inspector Knight was very much Mega Man X, I guess Plague Knight was kind of a mixture of different characters, but maybe because it's more new, too, right. they had less to base it on or to think about, so that's going to take a lot longer to play. Exactly. They, they kind of have to come up with this original move set for King Knight that is also inspired by what you see when you fight him. So, no, I completely yeah. agree with you. Um, in other good news, they we finally have gotten more uh, news and confirmation about the, play, the Amiibo 3-pack for Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight. Uh, that was announced quite a while ago, and then it's just kind of disappeared and now uh, we know that it's going to be coming out along with everything else in December and I you know I I assume you already wanted it back when it was uh, revealed and I you know certainly want it I'm getting this thing and, and actually what's cool amiibo support seems to have died mostly in yeah. general but these amiibo actually unlock meaningful things like I kind of thought they were just going to be there to unlock the existing stuff that you can get like new challenges and such but no, they all unlock a new costume in their respective game. You get Boom Tech Plague Knight, Lich Lord Spectre Knight, and Ultimate Supreme King Knight, which is the best. <laughs> that name sounds so King Knight. And if you look at the design, it is it, it looks like Ultimate Supreme. It looks very gaudy like King Knight actually is. And that, that sounds like your favorite one too, right? Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Would you have a crown on top of his crown or something? It's <laughs> but... so good. It's so King uh... Knight. It's like our last, this could be maybe the last uh, Amiibo support in a game for all we know. It Based might be. Based current trends. It sure seems like it, because Nintendo seems to have pretty much abandoned uh, abandoned them, other than the, the new Smash characters that you know, haven't been covered yet. But uh, they are cosmetic only, so you don't have to worry about them wrecking the game balance. Um, they all unlock yet more platforming challenges in each game's challenge mode, and it must be said that they they stated multiple times that these are only for 
you know, the, the these are not for the faint of heart. They are master level challenges that you really have to, uh, you know, really focus on defeat on beating if you want to. Um, you also unlock a fairy, like kind of like a fairy partner with each amiibo if you want. And yet they still say there are more amiibo surprises coming. So I don't know if that means that there are more Shovel Knight amiibo coming or more unlock surprises, like what they do uh, to be announced. But I can't believe that these things might even do more. Guess more unlock surprises, but it, yeah, it's crazy the amount of stuff in there. Like normally it's just maybe one or two things, but they they really go all in on their support for different features to differentiate each kind of mode or support. Yeah, no, they really do. It, it, it's super, uh, it, it is really genuinely inspiring to see that. And it's just nice to see that because again, Nintendo's kind of abandoned their own concept. Um, moving on, probably the least germane announcement to us personally, but still cool for the Xbox Shovel Knight fans out there. Uh, yeah. The Xbox One is going to get a retail release for Treasure Trove, which it did not previously have. So those of you Xbox One players who love Shovel Knight, there you go. Yacht Club threw you a bone. Um, and they are also adding new features to every existing Shovel Knight game. Like, they are going all in. Um, in Plague of Shadows, you get an Alchemy Quick Select, which is great because it prevents you from having to go to the menu every time you want to select a new fuse, a new bomb type, uh, you know, stuff like that. There are going to be <laughs> even more. There are five more platforming challenges in, in challenge mode for Spectre of Torment that they're adding uh, you know, specifically for that. Um, and then my personal favorite thing, and you and I talked about this before the discussion, we're both super, it's just great that they're doing this, in Shovel of Hope, they, you can now uh, switch the pronouns for each character to they and them as kind of a complementary feature to the body swap mode, which changes the gender, which uh, swaps the gender of every existing character. And not only was that cool you know, back when it came out, it's cool because you get alternate sprite sets for all these characters, basically female Shovel Knight and uh, you know male Shield Knight and male Enchanter. Like, that was super cool, but now... You can really have whatever you want. You can assign your own pronouns, and I know I I, I don't I don't have to make it very clear that I think is uh, this is a super cool thing. But what about you, Tom? Well, yeah, the fact that this would be a very easy thing to gloss over in some quick bullet point, but they actually took a decent amount of time showing it off in the presentation to just kind of show how important it was to them to add it in and have it. Absolutely. So that was good to see. Like moving forward for more different people uh, in the world. I mean, it's, it's great to see and it's going to take time, but as developers, more developers do it. Like I think uh, Dream Daddy, that was one earlier on that did it. See right. a game like Shovel Knight added too, that's great. Right, yeah, no, it, it says everything about Yacht Club's company culture, uh, in my opinion, when, and I think that's a, you know, it says everything good about their company culture. And, uh, you know, as, as we know, Iwata has said in the past, games are for everybody. And I just love that they, as you said, devoted actual time in their presentation to making it clear, hey, we, Shovel Knight really is for everybody, and we want you to be able to tailor the experience to yourself, no matter who you are. And, you know, I just think that's great. But we could wax poetic on that all day, so let's move on. Uh, there are also three new language options and uh, expanded accessibility options across all games, which I'm also a big fan of. Uh, because some games aren't playable, depending on, you know, if you have a certain disability or anything like that, and they are trying to reach those people as well. And, uh, finally, there are a few more cheats they've added, and they look like the craziest ones yet. I know none of them are ever going to be as cool as the butt-butt code that just changes everybody's name to, I guess, butt-butt. I, I think that's what it is. But you got yeah. some cool things, like a wavy screen, like kind of a weird wavy rotating effect that, that comes onto the screen. There's like a screen rotation sheet giant characters like this seems to be like they're kind of going all NBA jam right with like the really yeah. weird stuff yeah that, the wavy rotating screen one that that could be a challenge like playing with your friend just to hand off the controller to see who can get farther in this crazy screen rotating around like I wonder if the controllers <laughs> will remain I know sort of one-to-one -one, or the, is, are the controllers is up and down gonna rotate as you're moving around if you let go I do wonder that because I guess it would be hard for them for the, the controls to change context because you don't know exactly at which point of rotation they would change. Yeah. So my guess is that they'll remain one to one, which is going to make things even crazier because I'm thinking of like the uh, like Smash, like the Spear Pillar stage when Palkia makes everything go upside down. I don't yeah. think your 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 inputs change, so that just makes it a little crazier. Same thing with like the Ramblin' Evil Mushroom item. 
Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun, I think. So yeah, they're bringing all these new features to the existing games, and then then they kind of shifted uh, gears to something that I don't think any of us were really expecting, at least not those of us who don't follow their Kickstarter. But they are in development uh, for uh, of a Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels board game uh, that's one to four players, and apparently it's already been funded, but they are still trying to meet their stretch goals, and they have nine days left. Um, this didn't do much for me, but I also admit I'm not huge on board games, so I don't know. What about you, Tom? Like, did this catch your eye at all? I, I enjoy board games. They're not huge in them. The part that caught my eye is how each level becomes a side-scrolling level as you add cards to the side of it and, I guess, push it along. Uh, that seems like a really neat feature uh, that maybe can help get Shovel Knight players who aren't the biggest board game players into it. Right, right. So, and that, that may be me. Um, you know, what they showed of it, it's kind of cool what they're going for. They're going for kind of like a side-scrolling board game type idea, which I don't know has ever strictly been done before, but it wasn't quite convincing me. But again, you know, this is just a trailer. It's it's not going to be something you really get a good feel for until you sit down and play it. And for what it's worth, they're going to have it at PAX uh, in a couple of days, so maybe we'll get a chance to check it out for ourselves. Did you catch the price on it for the Kickstarter, though? Because that's a big thing with board games. They I are did not. not that's cheap. true, <laughs> because you have to, you know, have to make all the pieces, and yeah, they are not cheap. And I don't, I did not catch the price, though. They should let you save money by having Amiibo support for the board game. <laughs> exactly. Or just give it away to, for free to everybody who's been supporting it. <laughs> it's hard to beginning. get started. Just, just give it away for free. But uh, no, for, for those of you board game enthusiasts out there, you know, it might end up being cool. Uh, I, I, I can't help but be reminded of other projects like the Mega Man board game, which was released but never really made a splash. So I don't know if this is going to be the same kind of deal, but... You know, hopefully it finds its own fan base. Yeah. Uh, all right, well then, let's uh, turn our attention to the, the final big topic of the day, which I would say was the biggest announcement uh, of this whole presentation, and that is the fact that there is a brand new Shovel Knight game coming uh, called Shovel Knight Dig, and it is a joint venture between Yacht Club and Nitrome, which is, uh, they are responsible for Bomb Chicken, is that correct? That's correct, and they've done many mobile games, like I think they did one recently that I tried called Spicy Piggy and stuff, but yeah, Bomb <laughs> Chicken is their... <laughs> is that <laughs> name? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to get peppers as you're like an auto runner and go along, but... Uh, they do all sorts of mobile games, really all a pixel art style and all of them, so. Right, and it definitely goes for a bit more of a 16-bit style aesthetic. I might even dare to say 16-32-bit, because the pixel animation is a lot smoother than, of course, the 8-bit games we've gotten so far. Um, yeah. And it looks fantastic. I, I know Nitrome is known for their pixel art and animation, and you can s absolutely tell uh, that their, their talents are, are being shown to full effect here, because the game looks fantastic campfire scene alone at the beginning it's like whoa this is right? it it's not 8-bit yeah it, it makes it an instant impression visually and uh, apparently it's going to have a, a, an all-new soundtrack by jake kaufman which is always exciting because he's a master of his craft and the shovel knight soundtrack speak for themselves and uh so but i have to say as as initially excited as i, as I was about this as I found out more about it, I'm kind of mixed, because basically this is a uh, procedurally generated game along the lines of something like uh, the original Steam World Dig, for example, or something like Chasm. And I'm not necessarily always against that, but almost invariably you can tell that there's a major difference between procedurally generated levels and levels that were designed by hand, specifically for player experiences in mind. How do you feel about that? I can enjoy a game that's basically a roguelike, like uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, but at the same time, it's not the same as a level made by a or a game made by hand. Um, so, unless it's generated really well, like Splunky, and maybe <laughs> has preset pieces that they kind of mix together, that uh, that will take something away from the game. Just hopefully, the gameplay itself is fun. And uh, that will sort of get it through. They had, like, there's some neat things to it. Like this Fortnite boss, they are saying in the Q&A that every time you go to the level, or to the, the room that the boss is in, it'll change a bit, like with spikes in different places. So That's cool. there'll be different things to keep track of each time. So at least there's that for replayability. Right, exactly. And I think I did read or hear that it is, they are specifically designed like level chunks that are stitched together. 
So yeah. I don't think it's completely randomly generated, but I think they are kind of hand-designed chunks that are then stitched together, which makes it sound more exciting, and I, it, it is. But again, I, I think of a game like Chasm, which also had that, but didn't really ever come together, in my opinion, uh, yeah. because of it. So we'll see how it goes. But it is exciting to have a brand new Shovel Knight project on the horizon. Uh, they were careful to specify in the following Q&A that it is not Shovel Knight 2. Uh, they're calling it a whole new Shovel Knight adventure, but that this should not be considered the full-on direct sequel to Shovel Knight uh, that we all assume is coming. So maybe we won't get a maybe we won't get a super shovel knight after all because this seems to maybe fill that gap and maybe it'll go straight to like <laughs> shovel knight 64 or something right yeah for me in a way it's sort of like two birds with one stone i was wondering recently like is nitro going to do another console game again after bomb chicken so we mm -hmm. get nitro making a console game and then two this leaves yacht club to either make Shovel Knight 2 if they really want to, or to try a whole new IP. Right, to actually uh, do might, a new IP. Yeah, which might be more exciting, and this will hopefully pay the bills for them, like to make it less risky, or to have right. more time for that new IP to come. Exactly. Yeah, I'm hoping that the reason they're co-developing this with Nitro is that it still frees up some of their staff to work on whatever the new, the next core Yacht Club Games release uh, is. And of course, we also know that we have uh, you know, a game like Cyber Shadow coming up, which also looks really yeah. exciting, and I can't wait for that. Um, but more on that in a second. Uh, I will say uh, really quick that it, uh, Shovel Knight Dig has been in development for more than a year, uh, but they uh, specify that it does still have a good ways to go. So I wouldn't expect to see this, especially knowing Yacht Club and their penchant for polish, I wouldn't expect to see this released until holiday 2020 at the earliest. I'm, I'm even thinking maybe like spring or early 2021. Yeah, I could see two and a half years being needed for this game. Totally. Um, and it does seem to be very reminiscent of SteamWorld Dig, where you the, the focus is on downward progress and, and digging. It's not a side-scrolling, well, it's side-scrolling in the sense that it's 2D, but it isn't about going to the right and, and, you know, traveling across these levels. The focus is definitely on downward progress. And I, I guess uh, the very, very loosely cobbled together story is that a new boss named Drill Knight, uh, as well as his uh, underling Spore Knight, basically crashed Shovel Knight's campsite and stole all its loot. So Shovel Knight's got to go after it. And that kind of reminds me of Donkey Kong Country, actually, where, you know, DK and Diddy, they're just minding their own business. They did nothing to anyone to be harassed. Yet here comes King K. Rule stealing his banana hoard just because. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like Shovel Knight, he sort of is trying to get Shield Knight stuff in the main game. But this time he's like, give me back my money. <laughs> exactly. It's like he didn't do anything to anyone. He's like, I just saved the world. I'm just trying to get some loot, make some money. And then here comes these, you know, these new knight bosses who just want to mess up his day. So I can, you know, I can relate. I hope Shovel Knight gets his revenge because he didn't do anything to anybody, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I was thinking the way they Shovel Knight digs downwards and how... Yacht Club is usually inspired by other games, even though it's being made by Nitrome. Imagine if they're inspired slightly by uh, Mario 2. Oh, and you yeah. Got to, they got the key in like a mask. Oh, the, the boss the... Chase starts chasing after you on the way out. What are these? What are those guys called? Phantos? They're not Phantos, Phantos or something yeah, like that. The those most horrifying guy so, in the Yeah, they're so genuinely scary, and I love the way they stalk you. So I, I, I agree. I hope that there is a, a, uh, a similar type of mechanic or enemy in Shovel Knight Dig. Um, but before we wrap up, I did mention Cyber Shadow earlier, and I wanted to yes. kind of bring that up in the context that this presentation was called Yacht Club Games Presents, and their description for it was, you know, get, out, get upcoming news and announcements on upcoming Yacht Club Games projects, as well as all, you know, as well as Shovel Knight news. But it, it wasn't the former at all. It was all the latter. It should have been called Shovel Knight Presents, or just Shovel Knight Direct, because this was all Shovel Knight. Yeah, Shovel Knight presents, you'll dig it. Um, but in the Q&A, that interesting question, like, where's Cyber Shadow? And they're like, well... And the guy's like, you don't have to say it. He's like, well, the developer, he had a lot of major dental work done recently. Ooh, I didn't hear that. Okay. So that is one disadvantage of being a one-man team. If you have health problems, yeah. uh, you might be delayed a while. But he, he's all good now and good. back on track. But I see that a lot with... I guess indie, devel indie developers don't always have a ton of money, so yeah. they kind of have to put off their dental work, and uh, that is... And other medical expenses, yeah. which is never a good thing. Uh, health should always come, for come first, but of course the reality, as you said, of indie game development is often such that you don't have very much money. 
Uh, so, yeah. you know, here's hoping that Cyber Shadow's creator is, is doing better. I think you said he is and has recovered from his dental work. Uh, because yeah. I am so excited about this game. And I think I even called it my game, one of my games of the show, at PAX East earlier this year. Was it PAX West last year or PAX, PAX East? No, PAX East. Okay. Because that was when yeah. it was announced by Yacht Club. And okay. I'm looking forward to playing it because I already threw my wallet at it before Yacht Club was even publishing it. So. Uh huh. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard of it until they, they picked it up. And it was basically, I think, my number two game of the show after Sayonara Wild Hearts, which I don't even know where that game is, but I'm so, so excited about that, too. But uh, anyway, I do think we have covered just about everything in this Yacht Club Games Presents presentation. Did you have anything else you wanted to bring up? Well, I am just looking forward to playing these at the show, and hopefully we'll get a ton of time playing Showdown and can talk about it for some impressions in a few days. Exactly. Plus, we, we know that they're going to have the first ever playable demo of Shovel Knight Dig at PAX, so we're going to get some hands-on time with that as well. In spades. In spades. I love it. Well, on th I think that is the perfect note to end on, so uh, that, do that about does it for us here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to get instant notifications when we upload new content. Otherwise, keep it on Game Explained for more on Shovel Knight and all things gaming.